Hello wonderful viewers, this is Big Vision coming to you from Big Vision Media. Today is General Sam Houston Folk Festival, right here in Huntsville, Texas. Big Vision Media will be taking you to the festival grounds for you to see for yourselves what this festival is all about. Come with me. Sir, what is your name? My name is Mac Woodward. So what is the significance of festivals like this? Well, I think it's very important for, uh, particularly for the young people, to come and learn about the early history of Texas mm. and the importance of uh, not only Sam Houston, but, but many of those early Texans and the contribution they made to, to us and the legacy they left us and uh, to celebrate that. If I should ask you to say a word out there by way of promoting this festival, what would your words be? Uh, I think I would just invite everyone that is a Texan or loves Texas or loves Sam Houston to come and be a part of this festival, uh, enjoy some of the life and times of Sam Houston's day and uh, learn a little history and just have fun because we have fun being Texans. What's your name? My name is Ramon Castro. What, what tribe are you? Well, uh, by heritage, it would be uh, my lineage would be uh, Lip and Apache. So, talk to me about your outfit. What is it about? My regalia that I'm wearing mm -hmm. is uh, consisting of a, a, a chief style bonnet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, turkey feathers mm -hmm. and uh, they've been dyed a certain way. Mm -hmm. They were worn by uh, big chiefs, you know, especially during uh, important times like signing treaties. And, the, and so the bonnet you know, represented that authority. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's your name? Ron Dickinson. What, what is this? What is it about? This is a Scottish bagpipe, or the Great Highland Bagpipes. It's an instrument native to Scotland, mm -hmm. and it's played by ethnic Scotsmen. Sir, um, tell me, what do you have over here? <clears throat> These are all muzzle-loading rifles. Okay, okay. Now, this is the only musket, okay. meaning that it's a smooth bore. It doesn't have rifling. Okay. It would be from the late 1700s. This is a flintlock mechanism okay. that's used to fire the weapon. Mm. It's got a flint rock, mm -hmm. a steel called a frizzen. Mm -hmm. When you drop the hammer, the flint strikes the steel, makes a spark, falls in the powder, ignites the charge in the barrel, the rifle fires. These were not real accurate weapons. They had limited range because they were smooth bore. Okay. Then we went to the weapons. This wow. is also a flint lock, nominally known as a Kentucky long rifle. It is built and loaded the same way as the musket with the powder, the shot, patch down the barrel, got the flint rock, which will strike the steel just like that one, the rifle fires. This was not a real effective system, although it was used for many years until the advent of the percussion rifle, mm -hmm. which you will notice that instead of the flint rock, mm -hmm. the steel, it's all been replaced with a drum and nipple set up. Okay. And it uses a little percussion cap, mm -hmm. which is just similar to the caps that's used on the kids' cap gun today. Wow, that looks so tiny. That's so tiny. You can easily lose it. And it's difficult to put on if you're a little bit, can't turn it right. So that would go right there. Mm -hmm. When you fire the weapon, mm -hmm. pull the trigger, the hammer falls, pops the cap. The fire would run into the barrel, ignite the charge. Mm -hmm. As you can see, that is much more effective. It's not as affected as much by moisture, fog, rain, whatever. So, 
That's basically the two type firing mechanism, percussion and flint. Awesome, awesome. Cecil, we want to uh, show you a little bit of appreciation for your loyalty and your dedication to the Cane Island Volunteers. And we have a little offering here for you. Whoa. It says Man. Cecil Gibbs, original member of the Cane Island Volunteers, Katy, Texas. Well, thank you all so much, man. Uh, Matthew. I, I, I have to go home now. <laughs> so what do you have over here? This cannon is a replica mm -hmm. of an 1841 Mississippi six-pounder mm -hmm. cannon. Mm -hmm. It's a field artillery piece. Mm -hmm. It's three-quarter scale mm -hmm. in its manufacture. Mm -hmm. This one's made out of uh, steel, solid okay. steel. It's been bored and uh, machined on the outside to a Napoleonic style. Mm. You can see the flare at the end of the barrel. Okay. And that's an example of a Napoleonic style. Mm. Oh, the primer! Hot tube! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Prepare to fire! Fire! So what's your name? My name is Dean Patterson. Sir, you look very much like General Sam Houston. I can tell from your height. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, everybody looked like this in 1836. Oh, really? Yeah, everybody wore long coats, especially when I came to town mm. and dressed up. Mm. You know, they wear a tie like this, a vest like this, a watch. Mm. And uh, so everybody would look like Sam Houston because they all wore the same stuff. So, so what is the significance of um, events of this nature to the current generation? Well, if you don't study history, you're bound to repeat what you did before that wasn't good. Mm. So history, you learn what not to repeat. Mm. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, what's your name, ma'am? I am Jonquil Jones from Fort Worth, Texas. Awesome. How about you, ma'am? I'm Denise Brown Sweeney from Ellis County, Texas. How about you? And I'm Marie Paddock from Garland, Texas. That is awesome. Now, you got something to tell me. What is this right here? Probably all right, so let's, all right, so um, what we're demonstrating mm -hmm. uh, this week is, or this weekend, are, uh, is Scottish fulling. Okay. What happens to fabric when you've finished um, uh, weaving it mm -hmm. and you need to make it windproof and waterproof. Women's work in Scotland and they would get together uh, and do this work together. It would mm -hmm. take six or eight ladies around a table mm -hmm. and uh, they would get the wool mm -hmm. from their weaving uh, wet uh, in a big vat of, of water. They would add ammonia to it, they would wring it out and they would set it down at a table mm -hmm. and uh, begin to pound it okay, and then to keep the work going smoothly they would sing songs. Let me hear that song. Oh, so we'll give you a song. <laughs> All right. Galicia Gully. Let's go. Galicia Gully. Aho hara huo. Me tarak me tam. Aho hara huo. Hididi o huo. Aho hi o hi o. And I'm the bullock me tam. Aho hara huo. Hididi o huo. Aho hi o hi o. Wow, that is interesting. Y'all want to say some shout outs to people out there? Just hi, world. Enjoy your. Uh, how about you? Uh, Michelle, we miss you. Yes, Michelle, we miss you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, so, what's your name? My name is John Unger. Nice to see Glad you, sir. To meet you. All right. I am reenacting mm -hmm. a mountain man from the 1830s. My outfit is what a mountain man would wear to a party rendezvous like this in the 1830s. Okay. But even at the parties we had to cook. Mm -hmm. So we needed a way to start a fire. Now what I have here is a piece of flint and a steel, a high carbon steel that was made 
in order to be able to strike a spark off of the flint. Huh? The it, flint is a type of stone. Okay. Then I have what's called a tinder box. Inside the tinder box, I have what's called char cloth. This is cotton cloth that has been turned into a kind of charcoal. Okay. And then I have uh, bark from a cedar tree that has been shredded and strike the spark with the char cloth on top of the flint. I brush the okay. flint with the steel okay. so I get a little spark off. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Okay. I uh, don't know if you can see it. Yes, I can see it. But there mm -hmm. is a little red glow yes. there. This mm -hmm. is burning. Now I'm going to put that mm -hmm. in my little bird's mm -hmm. nest yes. tender here. Blow gently on mm -hmm. it. Wow. And there you go. And there's the fire. Thank you so much for talking to me, You're sir. You're quite welcome. Thank you so You're much. Quite welcome. All right. What's your name, ma'am? I am Tiana Rogers. I am Sam Houston's Cherokee wife. How about you? I am Yana. Mm -hmm. And I am keeper of the horse. What, what is this about? This is the uh, traditional leathers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is deer, ha deer hide that's okay. tanned. Mm -hmm. It took five deer to make this dress, the front and the back. Wow. Because I am in town, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm adding the modesty for a fabric cloth skirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have the uh, breastplate, which mm -hmm. is glass, glass pony beads, mm -hmm. and then shells and feathers and all the other well, accoutrements that go with being, an, being out with the uh, people. So you are a Cherokee tribe? Cherokee tribe. My mother was white, but I am half Cherokee, half white. Wow. How about you? What you got on? This is also deer hide. Uh -huh. the, uh, the leathers that we wear are, are perfect for any climate. This will keep you warm uh -huh. in the winter and cool in the summer. Plus, you get a good grip. Uh -huh on the horse when, when you ride. ride. On the horse. Yes. I love the color of this horse. This is, um, we call him Runs Like the Wind. Oh yes, you can give him a big hug. Horses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much my friend, thank you. Until I come your way in my next episode, my name is Big Vision. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.